Hi, and welcome back to the second section of the Protopie course. So far, we've managed to import a bunch of scenes from our sketch design. We didn't have to create anything from scratch, and all the layers get merged as bitmaps, including text, rectangle, groups, components, and so on. If you happen to have mask, like here, so you have a mask that masks everything, well, the whole thing, including its uh, entire folder, will be merged as a single layer. And then if you want to group all of this within a container, then the group is intact. So we're gonna go back to Protopy, and you can see in transaction, we have a group, and then we have the merge group mask. So the reason why I need to have a group container is because the merge layer itself is going to take into consideration the size of the drop shadow and that can affect my animation. So I prefer to group everything so that it stays fit to the rectangle. But otherwise, as you can see here, especially for balance, since I didn't use a mask at all, every single layer inside that group was merged individually, which is also really neat. So ideally, you want to avoid mask as much as possible so that you can have control over every single layer individually like these. But otherwise, if you don't have a choice, then make sure to group everything inside a container and the whole thing is going to be merged into a single bitmap. So that's the part that I wanted to mention. I think this is really important when you organize your layers in Sketch or Figma or XD. It's very important to prepare everything properly so that the animation process is going to be smooth. All right, so with that out of the way, we can start doing a quick prototype, meaning that all we need to do is to connect all of the screens together using a trigger that jumps to each scene and that can come back giving us a full navigation of our app. Now the question is, what is a trigger? Well, a trigger is any event, including a tab, a double tap, like a touchdown, long press, drag. So these are the most popular ones. But also if you're prototyping for web, then you have the mouse interactions uh, or the keyboard. And then if you're prototyping for your device specifically, then you have access to the sensors. So let's say I want to make this card jump to another screen called cards. I'm going to click this. So that's very important. Uh, and then add trigger and then tap. Now, when I do that, it's going to know that this is what I want to click on. And so I don't have to set the layers right here afterwards. So it knows that card one being tapped is going to lead to something as a response. So now I'm going to click here and this is where I can start animating. But we're going to explore animation in the next session. For now, we're going to look at jump so that we can go to another screen. So that's what a quick prototype is going to do. And then we're going to click jump. And for jump, you can select which scene that you want to go to. In this case, we want to go to cards. And then we can select one of the transitions available to us, including fade, pop, slide in, slide out, and flip. So let's test those transitions. None is just instant. Fade, um, I click here and it's going to do a fade animation. I can refresh from the preview so that I go back to where I start and I can test like pop for example. So it does this, slide in and then flip, voila. But the most popular ones are definitely none or fade. And then if you're using a iOS sort of slide uh, interaction that use a navigation, then you might wanna use slide in which lets you customize the direction of the slide. So you can decide uh, if it comes from the right, the bottom or the top. For now, we're just gonna use a fade. And then when I click here, it's gonna go to the card. So I'm gonna switch to cards. And from here, I can decide how to go back to the previous screen. And I can decide to use the done text, add a trigger, use a tap, and then set a jump. Now the jump allows you also to go to a previous shown screen. So when I go back to the home, 
I click here and I click done, it just comes back to the previous screen and it's really useful as a back button. The next thing I want to show you, which is really, really important, is how to set up scrolling in your prototype. So here I'm going to go to container and go to scroll container and I'm going to set it to the size of my scroll. In most cases, it's going to be the full screen. So you can go to the inspector and actually you can use math the same way that you can do it in Figma or Sketch. Set it to 100% and it's going to set to 100% of the canvas and the same for the height as well. So 100% and now it's just going to take the full width and height. And after that, I just need to drag and drop every single layer into my container, just like that. Obviously, I want to put this below these bars. And now I can start scrolling. You might want to name your layers so that when you animate, it's going to be very easy to uh, pinpoint which layer is being animated. Uh, secondly, your scrolling has a bunch of properties inside the inspector, including the paging, the direction. So if you want to scroll left and right, you can just change the direction. You can change the bouncing effect or the default scroll position. So I can start at 100 by default, but I'm going to set it to zero. The other thing I want to mention is that when you scroll, you see that we don't really have space at the bottom. So what you can do here is to go to transaction and then you can set a bigger size for the height. And since this is a group, it's not going to resize the elements inside. So I can just set to 470, for example. And now when I scroll, it's going to give me some space at the bottom. Since Protopy 4, we now have components. So if you have a navigation or any element in your UI that's reused multiple times, then you can just go to that specific UI. So like, let's say this one, I'm going to convert this to a component. And once it's component, I can override each of these layers. And then I can go to the other screens that are reusing it. So now I can replace this one by the newly created component like this and I can just delete the old one like so. This component can be edited right here or from the components panel by going right here. Now, as I mentioned before, everything was merged as bitmaps, but I can also replace these by let's say a text layer, which means that I can apply overrides using my component. So I can create a text and kind of recreate this from scratch. So your email, and then I can use the same font. It's going to be SF compact or pro rounded. You can use the color and we're going to set the size of the font and then the weight to medium. And now we have a pretty good representation and I can just align this properly and delete the bitmap part. And now I have a text layer, which means that I can override this outside. So I can go back to login. And now, since this is a text, I can change to your username, for example. And this is an override, which means that it does not affect the original component. And when I reuse it, I can change to something else. Now components in Protopy are even useful for animations. So I can go to the component and then set my animation inside the component, which can then be reused. So for example, if it's a click animation, then it's going to appear everywhere that that component is being used. We're going to explore a lot of those things later on in this course. For now, let's just complete our prototype. So I'm going to go to home. I'm going to set a bunch of tabs. So for example, this avatar here is going to go to jump to the menu. And then from the menu, I want to go back. So tap 
jump previous screen. The other thing is if your hit area is too small, especially if you're using the size of a layer, you might want to set a bigger hit area. So for example, right here, I can set to be 20 more. So it's easier for the user to tap this arrow. Also, let's go to the dashboard. The dashboard, when I click here, it's going to go to my payment and I can use a different interaction. So for example, I can use long press or 3D touch, but since I'm not testing on the device yet, I'm going to use the long press and I can set it to jump to payment like this. So now instead of tapping, I can just long press it and it's going to go to the other screen. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Your homework is to finish the whole flow for the prototype so that all the interactions and all the screens are being accessed to. As with every section of this course, you're going to be able to compare your prototype against mine. In the next session, we're going to learn about micro interactions and animations. And I think it's going to really elevate your prototype from something that is very boring to something that is way more animated that has a lot more life and very representative of a real app. So I'll see you in the next session.